to another episode of This Old Shop. Today we're going to be talking about calibrating a click-type micrometer torque wrench. This one's made by Armstrong. It's a model 64086 with a half-inch drive, 25 to 250 foot-pounds. So, it's a nice little torque wrench. So what we're going to do is, uh, behind me I have my torque tester. we got a digital readout here and a torque cell here mounted to a steel base that's very solid so we can calibrate and test this really well. Now my unit is calibrated to 0.5% of accuracy. So whenever you're calibrating something, one of the cardinal rules is you need a 4 to 1 test ratio, which means this guy, which I know by looking up the, the specifications, is it's 3% of accuracy. So my uh, my torque setup is 0.5% accuracy, which means that we're well within four times more accuracy. So, let's get set up here. First thing we're going to do is exercise it three times at 100%, which is 250 foot-pounds. We'll get this set here. Almost there. Okay, got it locked in here. Put it in here nice and level. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm going to push down on it until it clicks three times just to exercise the springs, okay? See if you can hear the click in there. Okay, that's one. Two. Three. Okay, so we got it exercised. Now the first point we're going to test is 75 foot pounds. And we're going to do the same procedure three times and we're going to write down the readings this time so we can make sure it's within specs or accuracy. Those of you who don't know much about torque wrenches, here's the, uh, see if you can see that, here's the settings right there, and you turn this and lock it when it lines up with what you're looking for. So we're locked in at 75. First test, nice and slow until it clicks. Okay, I'm going to write down that I got 71.4. Again, seventy-two point nine. One more time. Seventy-three point zero. Okay. Now it's sixty percent of full scale, which is one fifty. That should be 150 right there. We'll do it three times again. Okay. Two more times. One fifty got six, which is pretty close. One fifty one dot four. Again, that was at a hundred and fifty range. Let's see how much you'll be able to see that here. Next is full scale at two hundred and fifty. Do the same procedure three times. We'll take the average of the readings. The reason we take the average is to uh, eliminate any human error because I'm pushing until it clicks. If I push too hard or too little, it 
can affect the rating. So, all right, here we go at two fifty. Two forty eight dot eight. Six to seven. Okay. So I can tell that this unit is in specs just by doing the simple math in my head. And that's the basics for calibration. If there's paperwork that I do denoting everything that we've done today and uh, the actual readings, we'll put a new sticker on it, we'll clean it up make a certification and give it back to the customer. Now, some people might be asking, why do you calibrate things? Well, calibration is the checking of a unit, such as this, against a known standard for accuracy. So my unit behind me here, I send it out to a lab that's four times more accurate than, than the .5 and so on and so forth, and it goes up the pyramid, so to speak. So I know this unit is at .5% of reading. And this piece was 3%, so we can so we can act, we can 100% uh, know that this is within specs now. Now a lot of people don't calibrate things, but how do you know if it's working well if you don't have it calibrated? Even if you're, let's say you uh, you're at an auto mechanic shop and you use a torque wrench to put tires on, let's say you don't have your wrench calibrated, you set it to 75 foot pounds. You, you click the tire, how do you know that torque wrench is reading 75 foot-pounds? You don't, unless you have it calibrated. So that's one of the main things, that you know that it's within specs. Now we got some other stuff going on in the shop we're going to make videos on as we go. We still have the fuel flow meter to finish up. We've got parts on order. Also, our mini mill broke. I, we've got an X2 Harbor Freight, uh, I think the manufacturer of Central Machinery, or SIG what it's rebranded as. The plastic gears inside of it broke, so we're going to have to tear that down and uh, we're going to make some modifications, put in metal gears, put an air spring, we're going to stiffen the column so we can do the machining a lot uh, more accurate and precise. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, if you got any questions, send me a comment and I'll be happy to answer it. Thanks very much. Thanks for watching this old shop.